I've got the autism. I mean, uh, hello. How are you today, viewer? You ready to give Silo Sybil another whack? Look at that. A pitiful 11%. They really expect you to get every single one of those mini mushrooms. And that's not something a fool like me could ever possibly do. So next we'll do the Crash Bandicoot themed costume. Pay respect to the OG as the, the cool youngsters say. So anywho, the uh, theme of this level is uh, bouncing on things. You've got those uh, spiky uh, tree stump cinnamon rolls, whatever you want to call them. The idea is if you press A at the right time, you can go extra high. And I guess that kind of works for the cookies as well, although I never did try it. They don't stay on screen long enough. But yes, bouncing is definitely going to be the overarching theme of the next uh, six minutes. By the end of it, you're probably going to be all... Uh... STOP BOUNCING! <laughs> so anyway... Um... So, uh, if I could speak to the game's art style for a moment here, I like the fact that the, the character's hair looks both like hair and the tip of a mushroom. That's a very creative way of conveying the idea of a mushroom person. It's doubly functional, can represent uh, two different things at the same time. Far better than I could ever do. Both a mushroom head and a... Uh, uh, a bowl cut of sorts. Reminds me a bit of a uh, coconut head from uh, Ned's Declassified. For those of you who remember that one. Probably not too many of you. But anyway, yeah. They certainly did the theme of uh, a mushroom person quite well in this game. Much better than those chuds who made uh, a Mushroom Men the Spore Wars for the Nintendo Wii. Nah, those guys did a good job, too. That was a, a solid 3D platformer. Uh-oh, we gotta jump on vultures. Doing an homage to the Donkey Kong Country. Remember they had that level of uh, vulture culture, and it had that song that went... Yeah, hopefully that was the song that played on Vulture Culture, or else I'm just gonna look like a doofus, but anyway, you get the idea what I'm talking about. There are at least two games out there in the world now where you jump on vultures. Were the vulture enemies ever brought back in Donkey Kong 64? I don't feel like they were. Anyway, we gotta kind of subvert expectations here. We have to go back from where the checkpoint is in order to position ourselves properly. They're mixing up the formula, you see. Just when you think you got this game figured out, they throw something else at you. Anywho, uh, you'll notice that the uh, hitboxes and the vultures are very, very unforgiving. Their, their entire wingspan is a hitbox, so you can be what looks like a good distance away from them and they can still hit you. So really, the only way to defeat them is to jump on them. Trying to slap them is just a, a wasted effort. See, like that? See, it looked like I was far enough that they couldn't hit me, but in fact, they could. They don't mess around. Speaking of vultures, here's a long shot question that I doubt anybody could answer, but... Uh, Back in 2010, the Nostalgia Critic interviewed the uh, the cast of the Animaniacs, and uh, one of the Animaniacs writers said he had a new show that he was working on, and it was going to be about uh, Looney Tunes-esque vultures, and I think one of them flew a helicopter or something. It's going to be like an animated comedy about them. Obviously, that never made it to mainstream media, but my question is, did anything ever happen with that property? Did anybody ever follow up with that guy and see where his project went? I mean, I know most projects in Hollywood never actually make it to, you know, anything tangible. There's just lots of ideas that get thrown around and never picked up on, but I just wonder if anything ever happened with that, you know? The things our memories hold on to...
So, anywho, uh, you might have noticed there's these uh, occasional uh, micro stutters in the video, and uh, it's not part of the game normally. That That's an intentional decision by me. I've been uh, putting many cuts in this episode for the sake of having this be a watchable length, just like all the other episodes. Because if I didn't cut out all the deaths, well, it, it would just be insanity. <clears throat> Once we actually reach the end of this level, I think you're going to be quite shocked by the number of attempts it actually took to beat this level. This is just bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Whatever happened to Gwen Stefani? She's still making stuff? Mm, something to look into. I feel like a lot of the artists of the 2000s are still around and making stuff technically, but it's not at the point where anybody really cares, you know? Like, um, like Green Day is still making new music, but I mean, have you heard anything that they've done past like 2009? And, uh, and uh, Beck, well, he's more of a 90s artist than a 2000s artist, but uh, Beck is still making stuff. But again, when, when's the last time you, you heard a Beck song on the, the radio? Just a lot of the artists of the past are just kind of stuck in limbo. But who cares about all that? The end of the level is within sight. The end is near, dear Let's Play Watcher. The end is near. At least as far as this level's concerned. What's Dixie got to say? Is Dixie a type of mushroom, by the way? Where do these names come from? Well, anyway, yeah, look at that. 142 times. So, next up we've got a boss battle. I said we were going to do this at the end of the last episode, and... Now here it is. I wasn't lying to you. Look at it. It's real. It's real. <coughs> anyway, so um, this is Ham Das, I guess. I do wonder where they came up with that name. At least to me, the name Ham Das sounds uh, sounds very German. But then you you look at this design, and there's really nothing German about it. it based very heavily in the Eastern mythos with the the Buddha pose and the, the the multiple arms and what have you don't quite know what the theme was to tell you the truth so yeah I did some off-screen practicing of this one because this is actually uh, quite difficult the key however is to just stand in the middle don't don't move around too much and you should be good just try not to screw around too much. That's how people get hurt in shop class, when you screw around too much. <laughs> Remember that? That was uh, from South Park, and then uh, the shop teacher saw his dead wife and started talking to him in Kenny's face, and the other kids were watching this go down, and they were all, oh, this is pretty fucked up. <laughs> what a strange episode. There was that one scene where the, the shop teacher tried to tried to commit suicide by uh, laying on the conveyor belt and going into the saw and he was going to do it to, uh, I guess, ass first and then he stopped midway and turned around and he was like, what the heck am I doing? That would have hurt like hell. You gotta go in head first. <laughs> uh, so, perk. So, the key to look out for is when he holds his hands in that sort of accepting pose, that means he's ready for you to climb up there and slap him right in his face. Just gotta keep an eye out for that. If done perfectly, it's actually possible to beat this boss battle in about 75 seconds. If you can go through the whole thing without making any mistakes. I saw a speedrun, it is possible. I don't know why there were little white cum globs on the screen after we beat him. Interpret that however you want. So anyway, um, we'll do one more uh, episode of Silo Sybil, and uh, then we'll do something else.